Hi, welcome to Two Lacquered Ladies, the podcast about nail polish and nail art by the ladies who stream it. I'm Stephanie, aka Fanatic, here on every social media platform that matters. I'm an unprofessional nail artist, and I like to make fan art on my nails. Why did you go so fast? <laughs> because you were dancing, and I was trying to get through it without laughing. <laughs> Welcome to Two Lacquered Ladies, the podcast about nail polish and nail art by the ladies who stream it. I'm Stephanie, aka Fanatic, here on every social media platform that matters. I'm an unprofessional nail artist, and I like to make fan art on my nails. Howdy, my name is Danny, and you can find me as Danny Shout online. I'm a science educator by day and a nail art hobbyist by night. On stream, I like to create scenes with themes on my nails. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Danny. Did we get it? The land of the living. Hi. I had to I had to record that intro twice because Danny thought it was a perfect time to start doing a little dance. <laughs> I just like doing little dances. I can't help myself. It's fine. It's okay. You've got such a rhythm to your intro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just I know nice. you got to cut loose. Foot loose. I do. It's been yeah. a rough week, but I have been distracting myself with plenty of anime and corporate training videos. As mm. you do. <laughs> As you do. As I we think do. I think, yeah, I was gonna say, I think me and you are the only ones who appreciate the artistry, the, the comedic efforts of corporate training videos. Uh, I was looking for a video for my lesson about the importance of wetlands, and I found one from the Connecticut Watershed Management out there doing doing the good work. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Danny says it to me, and first off, I learned nothing from that video. Yeah. Zero. That's a good, that's how corporate training videos work. Yeah. So they go on, they're talking about like the laws for people who manage watersheds and stuff. And they're like, the law can be found at the link below. Read it on your own. It's like, oh, thanks. The, thanks. Like one thing you were supposed to teach me. But no, I had it all. It had the cute little narrator down in the corner with the, like the early aughts internet noises. He had a digital assistant that he introduced and she was like, you mean the brains of the operation? <laughs> like, who is this for? Who is this for? <laughs> Danny sent that to me in a text. Like, who is this for? And like, I have been saying it all weekend. I'm just like, who is this for? The best part, though, is towards the end of the video, and it's it's just a few minutes long. Um, they start doing all these jump cuts to these different people who are involved with watershed management, and they're talking about the benefits and the and the values of watersheds. And in the background is the Hall of the Mountain King. And it starts off real quiet. It's like, watersheds are beautiful places for people to enjoy. Like by the end of the video, it's like frantic and the jump cuts are getting faster. And it's like, what is, what is this for? Water filtration, ecological benefits. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I didn't realize the demons were invited to the, to yeah. the watershed. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Is that what the thing was? I, I have no idea. Um, it was great, though. I didn't end up showing it to the kids. I uh, decided it wasn't really... As you said, you learned nothing. So I was like, I, I, I did learn either. nothing. Uh, and then <laughs> I would just be laughing in the back of the class. And they'd be like, what is wrong? <laughs> like, Why do you find this so amusing? It's like, you don't understand. You have to have been alive during the 90s. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but we love corporate, um, fake corporate things. That's why we chose our theme song for this yeah. podcast. It, it sounded like a SeaWorld like, commercial. It, it, no, the, you know, there's a song that I have that sounds more like a SeaWorld commercial. Oh, maybe okay. Some, Different maybe, one. maybe we should have like a fun episode as opposed to all our <laughs> other episodes. And the like very serious. the really serious <laughs> episodes we have are very special episodes where we talk about social issues. Um, but anyway... The point is, is that um, you should show them the Wendy's training video instead so they can learn how to grill the burgers that are yassified. Yes. <laughs> yes. I will do that. I will do that. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the Wendy's um, grill skills rap. Grill then... skills. <laughs> You're missing out. <laughs> yeah, just look up Wendy's grill skills. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a very good time. You're, you're gonna love it. I guarantee it. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, 
Um, speaking of really good times. Speaking of really good times, everybody, <laughs> we have a special guest here today who, like normal, has been sitting awkwardly listening to us talk about <laughs> corporate <laughs> trading videos. Uh, Alindry, how's it going? Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have... I have to say, it's really strange listening to that at, like, normal speed and not times two speed. I thought I was having a fever dream for a second. <laughs> I was like, wait, everything sounds so slow. <laughs> Did we sound, like, drunk? Because usually if I listen to somebody on slow, I'm like, are they okay? Are they drunk today? <laughs> no, it's just normal. Are you, are you all right? Is this, uh, is this normal? <laughs> <laughs> do you need me to call somebody uh, but yeah welcome Lindry. welcome to the podcast how are you doing today i'm doing fantastic thank you so much for inviting me oh my goodness gracious i can't believe it <laughs> of course we have wanted you on for a long time but 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 here here's the reason that it's taken us so long we've been tired that's a valid yeah. reason <laughs> it's a valid reason <laughs> so we kept being like let's do it uh not this week though <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> just keep pushing it off. Keep pushing it off. Film this next week. Yeah, let's just, let's just end it here. It's fine. We'll wrap it here. It as Good is. job, guys. <laughs> but yeah, if you do not know Linry, Linry goes by Wow Linry on both Instagram and YouTube, and she popped up uh, about a. Well, I mean, you made your channel a year ago. Yeah. I became aware of you. I feel like sometime in like December or something of last year. And you've just been you've just been rocking it, and you've been making so many videos, and just doing so much of the good work on the YouTubes and on the Grams, and it just become such a such a great part of our community. So we're so excited to have you today. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just really happy to have found this community. Um, I always thought the nail polish community was just full of like elegant people. <laughs> it just turns out there's like a, a horde of us gremlins just chilling under our bridge, being like, "Yes, we can put whatever we want on our nails." <laughs> <laughs> You found the weird girls. <laughs> so you've been in the gaming community in the past, and I know that that was a very different experience for you. Oh yeah, very, very different. Um, very male dominant. Uh, that's actually why I cuss a lot. Uh, I have a sailor mouth just because if a, the first thing a man hears out of your mouth is a curse word, he's less likely to hit on you. And I discovered that from an unfortunately very young age, like probably like nine, I discovered that. <laughs> So, the, yeah, <laughs> deal with men just DMing you and being like, hey, how you how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing fine. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. I remember you saying kind of when I first started following you that the gaming community had been like pretty hostile. Oh, yeah. Very hostile. Um, It's it's the reason why I'm pretty cagey, cagey about like details about my house and where I live in the state of Florida. Yeah. Um, if you listen to me stream, I'll say, I have to get down to Orlando. I have to get over to Orlando. I have to get up to Orlando. Orlando, that's like not that far away from me. I can, that's, I can go to Disney World whenever I want. I'm very cagey because I've had people send me photos of the front of my house. <laughs> oh, geez. And it was oh, through, my God. It was Google Maps. It was Google Maps. So obviously, the, yeah. It, you, you learn to protect yourself quite a bit. Um, <laughs> it's the gaming community is wonderful. I love it oh so much. But you know, I've I've learned from a young age don't don't put yourself out there, or else you might get bit. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's true for any internet safety. So not not a bad lesson to learn. Um, just not a fun one to learn <laughs> either. <laughs> Most definitely not. But I think it's protected me though. I've I've learned a lot, and it is what it is. It's given me a thick skin as well. So now when people are like, "Ew, yellow nails," I'm like, Ugh, "Your mom." <laughs> just like it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> roll off, you know. It's just like, Ugh. what's the worst thing you can say to me that a gamer hasn't already said to me? You can't. I I guarantee you, you can't beat out what they've said to me. I played League of Legends, okay? <laughs> I feel like when, yeah, League of Legends is, mm -hmm. is notoriously, notoriously awful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They get creative over them, that chat box. <laughs> I have never played it before. And part of the reason is, yeah, because it has a horrible reputation. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not big on, like, multiplayer games that much anyway. Although I did, I know that your tag, Wow Linry, is because of, wow, yeah, World, World of Warcraft. Of Warcraft. Yeah. How long did you play World of Warcraft? I have to ask for my husband's sake. I played from uh, vanilla to Shadowlands. I stopped playing in Shadowlands. My guild broke apart. And honestly, a whole lot of controversies came out with Blizzard Entertainment and like the, yeah. like the 
least egregious thing that happened was they were stealing women's breast milk from the nursery. So I was just like, you know what? I'm okay with Blizzard right now. We can just stop this lifelong relationship. Because I, like, I slayed the demons of hell with my parents. We grew up playing Diablo 2. <laughs> we were all gamers. And it's just like, you know, I grew up on Blizzard and it was hard to say goodbye. But, you know, sometimes life changes as you get older. <laughs> I actually grew up in the city that uh, Blizzard exists in, in, in Irvine, Anaheim. California. No, they're in Irvine. Irvine. Wait, My... Oh, BlizzCon's in Anaheim. That's, sorry. Yeah. Irvine and Anaheim are very close, um, but one is North County in Orange County and one is South County in Orange County. And people, there's memes. Out of, you guys probably don't see them as much, but I see tons of memes about the difference between like the avocado toast section of Orange County and the <laughs> like actual food section. And I'm very lucky to have, have graduated to the actual food section. Yeah. <laughs> Of Orange County, but yeah, no, like uh, I grew up in a like the the joke in Orange in Orange County, California, and perhaps Orange County, Florida as well, where the other Disney yeah. is, um, is uh, that they used to all be orange groves, and I lived that. Like Irvine was all orange groves, and then like Blizzard moved in, and other businesses moved in, and now it's like turning more into an herb than a suburb was rural. When I moved there, <laughs> it was a suburb, and now it's, like, an herb, as I said. <laughs> no, but that's, the, that's the thing with, like, Orlando as well, like, Orange County in Orlando. Um, basically, they, you know, they took down all the orange groves. But <laughs> because tourists were flying into Florida for the first time, normally they go to Orlando, they were sad that they weren't seeing orange trees. So along the highways, they just planted orange trees to make the tourists happy. <laughs> that way they could be like, look, we're in Florida, as they're driving <laughs> out to <laughs> yeah, that's just so funny that apparently Disney just had a vendetta against orange trees. He was like, <laughs> you show me an orange grove, I see an amusement park. <laughs> this would be a great place for a fake mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My favorite use of orange trees in, in the Disney canon is that at the Jungle Cruise, at least in California, and I would not be surprised if they did this in Florida too, they took two orange trees that were growing on that lot and they just turned them upside down and stuck the tops in the cement and they let them grow upside down. Do they still produce fruit? Weird. No, they don't. They just look like weird, dead things. They're in, they're both in... You really hated orange trees. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the popes from the Dante's Inferno just going upside down in the hole. That's how Disney views <laughs> orange trees, I guess. <laughs> I love that poll you just made, Danny. I love that That's Dante's what came Inferno. Up. <laughs> he's trying to bury them to hell, just like, you know. Yeah, oranges. he's like, I hate orange trees. I'm going to stick them upside down. <laughs> One day he got served pulp and he asked for no pulp and it's just been dead trees ever since. Things Disney hated. It was communists and orange trees. <laughs> Those were his big fights. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, we have some questions for Linry that aren't about popes or oranges um, <laughs> or Disney or any of that stuff. Now that I've made my communist orange joke. Perfect. You yeah, have to meet the quota. We got we gotta have at least one communist orange joke every episode. Go back to the previous episodes and see if you can catch all the communist orange jokes. Some of them are hidden deeply in there. Yeah, some yeah. of them are like subliminal. You got to play it backwards, but it's worth it. They're real funny. They're just as funny as that joke was. Oh my gosh, so Linry. <laughs> when... So Linry, what got you started in nail polish? <laughs> <laughs> i've always been into nail polish i was uh very much that like middle school kid that always had chipped black nails i was very much a goth kid i still have my tripped pants <laughs> from yeah from middle school nice. and high school <laughs> i mean if you haven't noticed in my videos i'll wear like corsets and stuff like that i've been dressing mm -hmm. that way basically my entire life so i always just had chipped black nails and i was always one of those people who's just like why is there bed sheets in my polish i just never understood it <laughs> it's until I, we've all been there until I, I found i think everyone everyone's experienced this until we all found our holy grail simply nail logical then we realized oh 
oh, there's other processes to this. Oh, no. The top coat wasn't a cash grab? What? Yeah. What? Base <laughs> coat? Why do I need a base coat? So when did you decide to start making videos about your nail polish? Ooh, okay. So I think everyone, we I think we all share a very similar story. Like, it's just the pandemic hit. And all of a sudden, it just, everything became a lot smaller. <laughs> so I think... I haven't been diagnosed with this. I think I have agoraphobia. Um, I have a general fear of the outside. Um, and I think when you have irrational thoughts, one of the worst things that can happen to you is having those thoughts realized. So having a general fear of outside and then having a reason to be afraid of the outside, a logical reason, being told, stay inside, it's dangerous outside, didn't do well for my brain. My brain was like, hmm, <laughs> we're handling this very well right now. But I realized... Painting my nails, everything kind of gets a little more quiet. Everything just kind of calms mm. itself. I found it very therapeutic. So I started seeking out smaller content creators. So like uh, Nicole Loves Nails and like uh, Janixa and Hillary, uh, Mediocre Mannies. I started seeking out smaller content creators and I found them. And I started lurking so badly <laughs> because I was afraid <laughs> to leave comments on their videos. I was afraid. I was terrified of <laughs> just everything. <laughs> Relatable. Yeah. <laughs> You can't disappoint a YouTube video. Exactly. And <laughs> and Nicole Loves eventually made a Discord for her post-stream, like, hangouts. And I was like, okay, I can lurk here for a few months before I even say anything. And that's, if you don't notice, I will pop up in someone's Discord and then I won't say something for months. It's because I'm testing the vibe. I'm tasting the air, seeing how it's... <laughs> what's, what's the vibes in here before I start communicating? You're like a little snick. So I was... <laughs> My forked tongue just <laughs> <laughs> mm, pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like, I've always had an interest in content creating. If you go back to my earliest videos on my YouTube channel, it's not a nail polish video. It's art. I was drawing portraits, and I just dropped that because I was like, Ooh, I don't like drawing so much right now. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've I've always enjoyed the editing process of a video. I it's so cringe. I used to make AMVs back in the day, animated music videos to like I anime love and AMVs. songs. Uh, they you love AMVs. <laughs> the moment like I was posting on YouTube when it like first came out making AMVs, and uh, the moment mm. the copyright system went through, that channel was deleted. <laughs> YouTube yep. was like, excuse me, ma'am. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm not a man. I'm like 12. Having Please fun. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun. Try it sweaty. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and what happened is I ordered the Hollow Taco retro, the retro jellies. I ordered that and it arrived within like two days. And I was like, oh my goodness. I I could just do a video. I could just I could just do a swatch and review and it would be perfect timing. And it, it was. Um, I will say. One of the worst things that could have happened to me happened to me because I made the video, I edited it, and then I posted it at like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, perfect. No one will see this. This is amazing. <laughs> big brain ideas. Big brain ideas. No one will see yeah. this. Mm -hmm. And then nothing bad will happen because no one saw it. And then I went to bed. And then Nicole Love saw that video and shared it. She's like, Lynn reposted oh, a video. No. <laughs> so I woke up immediately to 500 views and panic. Panic immediately sets in. And... It was, at the moment, it was, like, the worst possible thing that could have happened to me, but, like, two days later, I realized it was the best possible thing that could ever happen to me because it alleviated a lot of anxiety. I had, like, yeah. I <laughs> I didn't die, nothing bad happened, everything's okay, everything's fine, and it kind of just gave me more confidence that everything's gonna be fine. You can, you can just, you can keep posting videos. It's gonna be okay. Everything's fine. So, like, I'm forever thankful for Nicole for doing that because it really helped a lot with my just anxieties of the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it sounds yeah. kind of lame, but it's just like, you know, okay, we get it. You're afraid of the outside, but it's just like, it, it helped a lot. It was just like, ah, oh, nothing bad happened. Look, everything's fine. The house didn't blow yeah. up. <laughs> I want to talk about Nicole a little bit because it seems like you guys are, are pretty good pals. Yeah, I love Nicole. I'm like, okay, I don't, I've, I've dealt with loss in my life. So when I say I love, I don't mean like romantic. I just say, when I talk, when I talk to people, I just say I love you because it's important to tell the people you love that you love them. So, you know, of course. I, I love Nicole and she's like, you know, she, she's an amazing person and I feel like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I think she's one of the best watchers on YouTube. So my personal mm. opinion, 
She puts a oh, lot she of work into She absolutely is. Yeah, we didn't know who she was for the longest time. But when we were doing polished pickup bingo, we always noticed the swatcher with the long coffin nails. And so we were calling her long coffin for the <laughs> yeah. longest time. And people would even talk about like, oh, Nicole loves nails. And then eventually one day I was just, you know, looking at my YouTube and I was like, yeah, there's that Nicole loves nails. And hey, is that long coffin? <laughs> <laughs> And, and now she changed her nails and I can't I can't tell that they're hers for <laughs> she's in her villain era she has pointed nails now she's elegant she's grace and she's like walking down her curved <laughs> staircase in her like sheer robe that has fuzzies on it you know just oh. yes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> live that life <laughs> But yeah, so was it the smaller creators that you were watching? You mentioned that before that just really made you go like, I can do this. I can make these videos. Yeah, it's because like when you look for online swatchers, obviously the first person that's going to pop up is Kelly Marissa and her yeah. equipment mm -hmm. is so advanced. Like she has high tech cameras and all this other stuff and highlighting and all this all this stuff and you're just like well i can't afford a three thousand dollar camera and a one thousand dollar lens i'm so sorry uh, i guess this mm -hmm. is out of my reach um but then <laughs> when i saw like mediocre manny's doing it and, and all these other small creators i'm like they're they're just using their phone i i have an iphone 8 this is the most advanced technology ever i could do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're basically right <laughs> no that's what surprises a lot of people is when i say i use my iphone 8 and they're like it still works. <laughs> how how is your iPhone eight still alive? It's barely alive. Okay, <laughs> and please don't die, iPhone eight. Please, I need you. <laughs> See, I'm over here. Like, I have no. I I am an Android. <laughs> I don't really want to say I'm an Android girly because I'm not either of those things. But um, <laughs> I wish I was an Android though. But anyway, um, the point is, is that I have an Android phone and I only worry about what's new for approximately two days while I'm buying the phone and deciding which one that I want. Mm. Um, so yeah, when you said an iPhone 8, the irony completely lost on me. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a seven year old phone. I believe it came out like 2016, 18. I don't know time. I don't know years. Everything's a blur since COVID. No, I, I hate my iPhone. I hate my iPhone. The way Apple encrypts data drives me crazy because I need to access the back end of my phone constantly and just doing that. I have to jump through hoops, squiggle through long tunnels, and I'm just like, yes, let me in. If I had an Android, I'd just be able to like click and drag things. That's all I want. <laughs> Next time get an Android, are you up for a <laughs> No, okay. are you up for a renewal? <laughs> so so how my fiance and I function in life, we just use things until they die. I've got an 08 car and it better not die because I don't want to, I don't want to change my car. But like, we just use things until it dies and our old phones were dying. And my, my parents were like, Hey, we're upgrading our phone. You want our old ones? I'm like, free phone? Yes. Thank you. So then we got our phone. Eight. I wish that were me. <laughs> <laughs> we we do the same thing. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what my iPhone is. I've had it since it was given to me by my father-in-law and I haven't looked back. I think before that I had an iPhone 6 that got me, it got, I, I loved that thing. It got me through I think well over a decade I had that phone until it finally died. And I was like, no, uh, my car was a 99 until it, you know, um, we've got a 98 sitting out in the driveway. Hell like, yeah. mm, so good. <laughs> no. Give me that rust bucket. I love it. <laughs> my previous phone before this was a six and I, I had to boil it to turn it on because the battery would not turn on unless it was hot. So the phone, <laughs> so I'd have to give it because I don't have a hair dryer. So I'd have to give it a water bath. So I'd like boil water, put a Tupperware in that water, set the phone on it so it could turn on. <laughs> I use things until they die. It was still functional, okay? Functional. Two lacquered ladies does not endorse the phone boiling system. <laughs> May I be the first but not last to say, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean that with all the love in my heart. That is incredible. I hate updating my phone. I just have to move things and things get lost and I just hate it. And I will boil a phone before I have to upgrade. <laughs> 
put that on a bumper sticker, I will boil <laughs> it. <laughs> oh my god! I that's the title of this episode. <laughs> well, now I have an idea for a YouTube short. Okay, this is tomfoolery. Yeah, it's peace. Yes, I'm so excited. I by the way, I love it when you do a little YouTube short. And I do want to talk about the time that uh, we almost got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the April Fool's oh. joke? <laughs> oh my! So I woke up on April Fool's this year, uh, and I was about to go record this podcast with Danny, and I saw that I had been called out by Lindry <laughs> in the best little voice imaginable that I love. And by the way, I actually have a thing I want you to record in that voice at some point. Um, if I do this thing I want to do. But the point is, is that Linry um, called me out about my opinion about uh, Indigo and Blurple not being the same color. And um, you say that if you Google Blurple into the dictionary... You Google it into the dictionary, it doesn't show up. <laughs> and then I replied with my own video. Um, this being like, you know, uh, well, I know that Lindry said this, but as you see on Wikipedia, Blurple's right here, and Wikipedia clearly is the, the place for information, and if you're going to argue with that, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm right and you're wrong. And then, like, then some, like, comments started rolling in. <laughs> Which... Someone was taking me seriously, and it was a very cringe moment because I'm like, did they think that I actually said I'm right and you're wrong and meant it sincerely? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we like to joke with each other uh, quite a bit, and people do tend to, to misinterpret it. No, no, I just, I just feel like when not everyone's in on the joke, it could appear bad. I just, I felt like, I felt like I was so clear in that video, especially when I spoke like this. But like it's it's fine it's fine it's okay I understand not everyone's in on it and that that's a hundred percent fine <laughs> they were just they were defending you they you know they yeah. wanted to make sure a what what they could see is someone just picking on you for no reason yeah. <laughs> I was going to comment on uh, your video because you said not now Shepard dramatically I was like I was gonna yeah. copy animal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want anyone to be like thinking I'm taking it seriously. I didn't want to take it too far because I, I am a little bit of an edgy joker. You know, I like to make a little bit of edgy jokes. But I realized not everyone is in it. Everyone's okay with that. So I tried to tone it down for you know until I know my audience. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying I tell racist jokes. Oh my god, that made me so no. <laughs> she's not. No, y'all know she wouldn't be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having heated gamer moments. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It is kind of funny with you coming from the, the gaming community where that is rampant and uh, almost expected, yeah. you know, to keep up with everybody with the edgy jokes uh, to the nail polish community where, uh, let's be honest, a lot of our audience is a little bit older. A lot of our audience is, this is kind of their only connection to the internet. Um, and so they're not, they're not used to that talk. They're not used to these They're not jokes, used to and they take everything at face value. Yes, they don't know what trolling is, and it's it's really funny. So, <laughs> I loved the April Fool's. What are we calling it? Conundrum controversy. <laughs> the April Fool's Tom controversy. <laughs> Uh, I was super honored. Nobody has ever done something like that at me. <laughs> I do realize now, though, I should have asked permission because I, I feel so bad because I used I'm I'm used to like photoshopping my friends into things and we're all just like dogging on each other all the time, you know, making fun of each other, teasing each yeah. other. And I felt like we had that connection. I forgot to ask first just because like I feel like I don't, I don't know how to put it into words, but it's just like I've, I'm treating everyone like we're all pals and we are all hanging out. But like some people might not appreciate having their photo photoshopped into their video smashing nail polish. <laughs> I can tell you I loved it. I had a great time. When you <laughs> draw angry eyebrows on me and my little stick arms stealing all your hot taco. No, that's why I asked permission, because I asked permission from Nicole as well if I could like photoshop her into a bunch of things. And she's like, it makes me feel so famous do it <laughs> yeah yeah you have um open consent do what you want with me and danny <laughs> in your okay write my fanfic right now yes! yes we've been waiting for two lacquered ladies fanfiction is there yeah we've been you... waiting for it yes 
Yes, right? The fic. <laughs> so, Libby, what uh, caused the transition in your content from mostly swatching reviews to now you're our primary source of nail news? Um, I... I'm not gonna lie. We all love the drama, right? We're of all course. here for some <laughs> silly just tea that's not really hurting anyone. Um, and I mm-hmm. felt like... Because for... I think the first one I posted was the Mooncat one. And I've recommended Mooncat time and time and time again on my channel. And I just felt like I had kind of a responsibility, at least to my audience, to inform them. Because a lot of people it, don't follow Reddit. A lot of people aren't following the Facebook groups and stuff like that. So they don't know what's happening. So I just felt like I should help get the news out a little bit and kind of try mm. to get the data together. Because a lot of people were also saying, this isn't a big deal. This isn't happening. This is only one person. You're all lying. You're all exaggerating. This is this is not, not nothing's happening. But I was able to find half a dozen posts, over 20 photos. Of, like, I, I was not able to put all these stuff I found in the videos. So yeah. it was obviously an issue. And these are people who are just reporting it. So how many people are getting broken bottles and not reporting it to Reddit or Facebook, you know? So, and then Mooncat right. mentioned it, meaning it's an issue. <laughs> mm-hmm. Meaning that, hey, uh, something's happening, guys. Everything's okay. Don't worry. So I just felt like I had a bit of a responsibility just because I've re- recommended Mooncat. It's a very expensive brand. It's a luxury brand. Um, so I just felt mm-hmm. like I had to get it out and it felt a little fun. Like I was like, oh, oh, just dipping my toes a little bit. And uh, just news reporting. <laughs> You do some great investigative journaling on behalf of the nail polish community. And we, I agree with you. Like I'm certainly not following the Facebook groups and on Reddit, I mostly just look at pictures and I don't read anything. So, <laughs> so yeah, I never would have known that that was an issue until you made a video about it. And I do appreciate that. Oh, thank you. It was also a way to, sorry, I, do, I can't take a compliment. Um, it was also a way to test out my green screen because I wanted to do my how to stamping video and I wanted to make sure it was good and it could stand the test of time. So I was like, this is a perfect time to play with a green blanket I own that I have safety pinned to my wall. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, I love all of your, I love that you are so frugal. Like that's just incredible to me because I feel like we all need to be more like that both for our own finances and also for the earth the world at large you know learn mm-hmm. to live with less like i'm not proud that i i get a new phone every once in a while um i mean i'm not crazy about <laughs> my phones i am not one of those people that's like i need the new iphone this year but uh but yeah like i i would love to be the kind of person who really just like reduces reuses and recycles and it's just so Amazing that you do that, that you didn't go and get a green screen. You're like, ah, I found a green blanket. I'm just going to put it up. Well, now I do actually own a green screen. (laughs) I did buy one. Oh, okay. Well, I I mean, for the first few videos, it was all just a blanket, (laughs) but it it couldn't bounce light well. Um, I, I could not bounce light off of it whatsoever. It was absorbing the light. So I was getting these two orbs in my background and I was like, this is not, this is not ideal. (laughs) My little angel. You don't want two orbs? (laughs) I want orbs. (laughs) Give me two orbs in my background. (laughs) I really admire that about you because I felt the same way when I started making videos like, oh, I don't have a proper camera. I don't have like recording equipment and stuff like that. Um, But seeing other small creators. So you using a blanket is just another way to encourage people, you know, who don't have the means necessarily to make Kelly Marissa videos to make some videos because more content's better no matter where it's coming from. This is a little community and I love to see it grow. So I appreciate you. I mean, I've had several people who like reach out to me. They're like, how do I get started? And like, I don't have mm-hmm. a tripod. I don't have this. And I'm like, stack your phone on books. That's what I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, my art videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My art videos, when I originally started doing that, I put a desk next to a bookshelf. That way I could put a ruler under a bunch of books that way I could put my phone on it to record myself you don't need all this expensive stuff just need to Mac- macgyver it you know you need to just yeah. stack it on books everyone has books <laughs> I, I, I sent someone a video of that and I used my old college te- textbooks and I was like this is more expensive than my my phone stand <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> What did you go to college for, if I may uh, ask? I, I went to college because it was expected of me, uh, and I didn't, I went for two years, and I didn't have, like, a degree in mind. I was just kind of getting out the, like, you know, the Englishes and the maths and stuff like that, and I was like, I hate it here, and dropped out. 
Um, I took so many art classes, though, and I was like, ooh, I can't go for an art degree. I'll get to do nothing with that. Ooh. I hate how much uh, college is pushed on young kids because I teach at an early college high school. And yeah, that is the expectation. And it's so not for everybody. And it's so hard to convince parents that like, hey, there's other options. In fact, they might even make more money going with these other yeah. options. Um, and the, the old mindset is still so strong that like, no, you have to go to college if you want a good job. That's so not true anymore, especially with content creation. Like you are so successful <laughs> uh, so far, you know what I mean? Like, and you're just going to keep growing and, and doing what you do. And you're actually seemingly enjoying it. I hope you are, um, more than, you know, a, a regular nine to five, I think would bring anybody <laughs> that much joy that's my personal opinion if i could just stay home and make videos i think i'd be pretty happy <laughs> i think that is a, an important part of content creating i enjoy every aspect of it i enjoy filming i enjoy editing i enjoy just the interactions and commenting i enjoy making thumbnails i enjoy kind of tracking the metrics like i feel like i'm playing like little league softball like i know the rules but sometimes i sit down on first base and pull the weeds <laughs> <laughs> so I like I'm I'm doing everything kind of okay and I'm kind of right because if I track the numbers it will give me anxiety it will give me stress but like yeah. I'm just like I'm kind of playing a little bit you know there might be like a little stand mm -hmm. for the ball though <laughs> I do want to go back to uh, I do want to go back to the moon cat and uh, the news you've been giving because yeah um, I am one of those people that when the story first kind of broke um, I I don't remember exactly what I said so if you're like mm, uh uh you actually <laughs> said this then you're you're right. I did, but I feel like when news first comes out about almost anything, my first reaction is to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Just go, because especially like, I don't know if you've been exposed to like certain Facebook groups or whatever. There are some, uh, there are some groups that I feel like kind of are just waiting groups and people, individuals who are just like waiting to like find the mess up. Yeah. They're waiting they're to just, attack. Like, you, gi yeah. you give an inch and they fly to the moon with it. Yeah, them. like, I know there's one uh, group that I won't mention. They have, like, a no-buy list, or they used to. This group actually I don't think technically exists anymore. They had a no-buy list. I, I entered this group, and, like, one of the first posts, pinned post, was like, here's the brands you shouldn't buy from. And it was almost every brand with no information as to why. <laughs> and I immediately left, because I was like, no. Like, what? Like, please give me more information. Um, so it's so nice to have a place, like a, a person I can like, who, well, I personally know, uh, but who I can go to your video and be like, okay, please present the facts to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah, the moon cat issue was an issue. And I actually on stream on Friday went through all my moon cat bottles to see if I had any of the problems. And I'm not, uh, I have a lot of moon cats because I bought a lot when they first like opened, but I haven't really been keeping up with them as much. So the only one that I have that has kind of a concerningly thin wall is unfortunately my mer kitten. <gasps> no. <laughs> but yeah, so like, it's really good for somebody, I mean, for everybody, I think, because I think that a lot of times people will hear like brand bad and they'll be like, well, did you hear brand bad? You didn't hear? <laughs> That's, I'm here to yeah. tell you brand bad. <laughs> That's why I like the Reddit Lacarista Discord because they provide links. They're like, this is yeah. what's happened. Here's the evidence. It's not like, I've got bad vibes from this brand. It's um, just a little itchy. I don't like the font they use. <laughs> yeah. I've got to say that one of my, um, one thing that I've noticed um, among some people in the community is that they'll have a brand they love that will commit a heinous sin. Mm. And they'll have a brand that they don't love that will commit same sin. And they're not treated the same. It's just, it's slightly <laughs> no. different. Yeah. It's like, um, well, I can forgive this exact same sin. <laughs> No, that's, that's one thing I really regretted in my Mooncat, like the first video, the Mooncat Exploding Bottles video, was that I didn't bring up the stands. I brought up the haters because I think it's important to note that there are haters in this community and they will just attack at any site. And I saw that so much in the Reddit comments, like, I've never supported them. Why would you support them? It's like, we're, we're all trying to talk and figure out what's happening. Congratulations, you never supported them. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. 
I think I think like it's like you can just you can have your opinions, but like we're all trying to converse and have a conversation here. I just really wish I mentioned the stands as well because stands are insane. If I okay, if I don't mention Mooncat in a video, I get comment about it. If I mention Mooncat in a video, how dare I do not praise them enough? If if it's same with Hollow Taco, if I say something negative about a Hollow Taco, like I don't like featured guest or oh, oh my gourd. I you can believe I got hate comments like being like, how dare you criticize Christine personally? And I'm like, I'm not kicking her. I just didn't like these two polishes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> also, what do they complain? Like, it's a, I'm just looking at, or oh my gourd, right? It's an orange cream. Yeah, Nobody I, likes these, according to sales data. So what are they complaining about? Well, it's just pers <laughs> personally, I don't hold, like, Oh My Gourd is not up to Hollow Taco standards for me because it is a three-coater. I need three coats. Same with featured guests. Featured guests, Hollow Taco's Linear Hollows are one coat, maybe two. Featured guests is three coats, and a lot of people in the community said that they needed four. I don't, that's not yeah. Hollow Taco standard. I'm paying a luxury price point. I expect a lot. Same. That's why I. That's why I criticize Hollow Taco and Mooncat a lot because I'm paying luxury price point. I expect a lot from this bougie experience. Yeah. I want an experience when I paint my nails with them. <laughs> <laughs> One of my. It wasn't my top favorite red. I'm not sure. I. I love my Rouge Louboutin. So I get you completely. I mm. want that experience yes. like that to me that polish is worth fifty dollars because I could sit down with this crazy bottle. And just feel and look like a million bucks. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're not getting that, then why are you paying the luxury price? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That you want it to feel nice in your hand. I love I don't like the way Mooncat feels in my hand. I just don't like that bottle. I struggle with the cap, but it mm. looks beautiful. Oh my god, on my shelf. I'm just like looking at it in the corner, like my little gems, my little precious is rocks. <laughs> You can see mine right here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm yeah. like rocks. I'm like, look at my gemstones. <laughs> <laughs> the same with the Hollow Taco Balls. I feel they like look expensive. They look bougie. I mean, they are expensive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. They better look it. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I completely agree. But that's why I give like leeway to like China Glaze and like Color Club because I'm like, well, I paid a dollar for this bottle. Like, pff, it, it worked. Yay! That's why I'm like excited when an LA color, like my LA colors jelly video, I was so excited by them because they were really good. And I'm like, I paid a dollar ninety eight for these. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm just excited when it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love buying the discount polishes and getting like super surprised by them. Oh, it's like a it's like a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that color club dollar sale. Oh my goodness! I got so many little trinkets. <laughs> yes. Oh. I could go for a dollar sale right now. <laughs> I'm just itching to spend. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to go oil our cutes. So we're going to stare down Linry and make sure that she does it. And also stare down me because I always forget. Um, and then when we come back, what is that? It's, it's just, is that mineral oil? No, it's cuticle oil. It's, it's just cheap cuticle oil. It's mineral oil. It's How cute. Dare. I know. It doesn't have whole well, oil in it. It smells funny. I have. Okay. Here's my actual cuticle. I couldn't find it. It was, it was hidden behind my, my cup. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> this is, this is, All right. This is pure jojoba and vitamin E or vitamin C or whatever that is. It's a vitamin. We're going to go bully <laughs> Linry and when we come back, we'll be asking some more questions and uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right, we are back. We are moisturized. We are in our lane. We are thriving. We have bullied Linry about her cheap cuticle oil. <laughs> that probably isn't as cheap as just regular jojoba, but she also had that. So don't. It was a gift. So nothing's cheaper than free, right? <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Uh, so yeah, I'll, for I'll forgive you for your blossom cuticle oil. Um, I only know it because I've seen it at Five Below and I've gone, what's in this? And I'm like, ah. Uh -huh mineral oil <laughs> so. i did use my actual jojoba oil one so <laughs> excellent perfect we would have kicked you off the show oh, okay okay so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> then <is> the rules <laughs> But yeah, we have a few more questions for our special guest today. So, Danny, why don't you uh, why don't you read it? Sure. Hey, Lunry, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um. So we are both really impressed by your 
content creation in terms of quantity. So not only do you make quality videos and you post to Instagram every day with amazing swatch uh, pictures and all that, how how on earth do you time manage and schedule yourself to make that happen? Because uh, how on we need earth? to know your secrets. <laughs> I think I think for, first and foremost, I don't have a job. I don't, I don't have a job, so I like I, I'm a homemaker. I clean the house. I cook. I I do all that nonsense, and uh, so I just have a lot of <laughs> that time. like super important nonsense. You mean <laughs> <laughs> keeping up the house? I mean, keeping up the house is you know it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah. And I will yeah. I will never ever begrudge anyone who has two working people in their household and they have a messy house. It is a lot a lot of work just to keep up with the mess that you make yourself. <laughs> no, but um Mondays are my filming days because my fiance uh he works from home but he has to go in the office on Mondays. So Monday's a filming day because it's way easier to film when someone's not in the house. And normally I film about three videos. Nail polish content creating is pretty easy because it's basically swatch and reviews or like top favorite videos. And, or you could just like scour Topic Tuesday and just pluck topics and you're like, yes, thank you for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, my idea. No, yes, I, I always credit yes. Topic Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like um, with how quickly I get it out, I do a lot of things in the filming process that makes it easier for me to edit. I know my editing program like the back of my hand. I know CapCut. I know how to work around it. And I feel like a lot of that is I don't look up tutorials. I figure it out. How I figured out how to do the green screen, it took me 20 minutes just to find the chroma key capture to remove it. <laughs> but I looked for it. So next time I bring it up, I can find it faster. I can just find it like that. Because if you watch a mm. tutorial and you follow someone's steps, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you'll learn a lot, but you'll kind of forget the in-betweens that you did. So I find just, mm. especially with computers, try and figure it out yourself. If you can't, then Google. Also, I, like, there there are certain things that I'll do, like my swatch, my swatch footage. Why am I showing the bottom of the bottle to you guys? You guys don't need to see the bottom of the bottle. I'm showing me the bottom of the bottle for when I edit. That way I see the name right there. I don't yes. have to pull out the mm. polish. I don't have to waste my time looking it up. It's right there. And why do I hold the bottle while I'm talking about it? So I can see when I can just throw it in. So I don't have to watch myself. I can just throw all the swatch footage in and then go from there. Um, yeah, when, I, when I'm talking about like my top favorites videos, obviously if I'm swatching or reviewing a new collection, I've taken notes so I know like how many coats it is and stuff like that. But when I'm filming like a my favorite summer polishes, it's been, I'm a seasonal wearer of polish, so it's probably been six months since I've worn that polish. I can't remember how many coats it was. So while I'm filming, mm. I say two coats, three coats. Mm. So that's what, like, you'll notice like a strange pause. It's because I've cut out <laughs> one of them because it's so much faster for me to just say it in seconds and then cut it. And I've already, like, I have to find the swatch footage, bring it into my editing software. And while I'm watching the swatch footage to add the coats, the, my little coat emojis, I just cut the two or the three out and I'm like, done. Easy. It saves me probably hours just by saying a second word, you know? <laughs> so I do a lot of things in the filming process. Yeah, we told you a bit about that process on our end when you started because I told Linry that if she likes that's the thing and like doesn't want it in the podcast to say in the podcast, like, please edit that out. Because like if you message me later, then like I might not be thinking about it while I'm editing the podcast. So giving yourself like hints and things while you're filming, while you're doing the content is so nice. I also, when I'm doing my favorites videos, hold the bottle next to me. And it's great because then I can do a really, really fast, like, you know, bulk edit yeah. basically where it's like, okay, I'm going to go to the end of this. Like, especially when I'm adding the pictures, you know, I'll be like, I think that's what you were saying too. Just like, okay, here's me holding this bottle of polish. So let me put this swatch in the corner and then, you know, we'll put them all in and then we'll watch the whole video. Yeah. So great advice there. Great advice. Yeah. I'll, also I'll mass. Okay. So like my text, the bottom, like when, when I say the, the, where it says like the polish bottle name and stuff like that, I'll type all those mm -hmm. words in. And then I'll mass select them all and then choose to make them bold, put them on a back black background, and then make them 40%. I do that all once because it it might take you seconds to do that. But if you're doing that for each and every single time you do it, that time adds mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, 
it's just working smarter, not harder to just save yourself time. So you film on Mondays and then I'm assuming you kind of edit throughout the rest of the week. And so like how far ahead are your videos? Um, right now I have one video that's fully edited. Uh, it's my favorite falls video. I filmed that two weeks ago, <laughs> but like I'll film three videos a week. Um, I'm not very far ahead because I like to edit early in the morning with my cup of coffee because I'm not annoyed by the sound of my own voice yet. <laughs> I've barely woken up. So I'll do like the clean edits, get rid of my ums and my butts and stuff like that. I have crutch words and I use them quite a bit. So I'm not too far ahead. I'll just edit throughout every morning, every little bit, just until I wake up enough and I'm like, ew, my voice, get out of here. <laughs> I'm tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> when do you get your swatching done? Uh, early in the morning. So if I'm not editing a video... Basically, okay, right now I have an immense backlog of swatches. That's why I'm posting every day on Instagram, twice a day. I'm posting a swatch and then a reel. I, when I first started off, I was just posting a swatch and then the next day I'd post the reel because I didn't have enough content. But my New Year's resolution was to swatch out my entire collection to get 80 polishes that were unswatched, swatched. And I took a month swatching three polishes every single day. That adds up. I think I'm just, wait, I can check my phone. I can check my phone and see uh, how far behind I am now. I'm catching up. I'm catching up because I wasn't purchasing collections for, <laughs> for a long time. I was on a no buy. Okay, let's see. What was my most recent swatch? Obviously, I posted the Holotaco taco swatches. Those are gonna be like I'm trying yeah. to get off the or I'm trying to get onto that algorithm boost. Like I said, I'm playing <laughs> playing Little League right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also trying to swatch my entire collection because for some reason I didn't do that when I first started collecting nail polish. I'm finally to the purples and I am overwhelmed with the <laughs> bottles I need to swatch. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Well, I found swatching at first, swatching two a day was very like, okay, I can handle swatching two a day, swatch one, swatch the other, and then I wear that one the rest of the day, then the next morning I move on. Because it doesn't take me long to swatch. A lot of a lot of people, they take like 40 minutes and Jesus, the amount of time people put into the swatches is like, I, I love that so much. I just, I wish I could put like more care into my swatches. They're very lazy. <laughs> My swatches are yeah, no, so my, I don't top coat mine or anything. <laughs> oh, I top I top coat mine, but it's just like, uh, I, you see some of these people and you're like, oh my God, you're putting so much work. I love it so much. Thank you for doing this for me. I'm not going to do that though. <laughs> I'm just going to be lazy. <laughs> I think it's so important though to allow yourself to be lazy. Like that's something that I've really learned in both like my streaming and everything. And also more so though, in like my other art that I do and also just like working around the house and things like that. I'm also a homemaker and we, we do have a full-time homemaker obviously cause it's me, but um, I don't get as much probably housework done as you do. And I don't get as much <laughs> content creation done as you do. And uh, that's partially because like, I just have a thing that makes me harder for me to do things, but like, yeah, I think that a lot of my holdups, especially with YouTube, is that I want to make things like really, really perfect. Um, and it can be difficult because sometimes I go into something going, it doesn't need to be perfect and it ends up being like really perfect. So like the last video I put out was my midsummer video, which took me like, you know, it took me several, actually several months of conceptualizing, but actually just two days to actually film and do beginning to end but like it's intimidating to go back in when i felt like i've done such a good job before but like it's better to have something than nothing yeah it, yeah it'd be better for me to have a less good video than never never do it again so i think it's so important that people hear you know like you you're not satisfied with your swatches necessarily you don't like them as much as somebody else's but you know but we all love your swatches and it's mm -hmm. like uh, so many of us i'm sure are like man i wish i could be like linry putting out these quality swatches these quality videos uh because your videos are quality yeah like, they really really are you put so much effort into them like they are they're they're great quality videos they're entertaining um, mm -hmm. They're not slow paced. I know that you love more than the clean edit, uh, putting the pictures in and yeah. making the jokes. And it's just such, it's just such a, a difference, you know, like seeing your videos and knowing that that's, that's not even, that's not even your final form. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, knowing that it's um, it's a terrifying, I think, for a lot of us who are like, but that's not what I look like when I'm not putting in my effort. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not that you're not, but and also inspiring because it's like, okay, like I can just 
I can just do it. I mean, I just do it. I I go through life. It doesn't have to be good, just good enough. And that's yeah. like if you expect perfection. Like a lot of people have come to me being like, "How do I start videos?" And I'm like, "Your first video will suck. You're gonna look back on yeah. it. You're gonna cringe, and you're gonna wish you could change everything." And that's good. That's an amazing thing. That means you've grown. You've learned. If you don't learn something from each one of your videos you post, then you're you're not improving. Like I said, like I like I'm very proud of my Mooncat video. But if I could do it again, there are changes I would make, and that yeah. shows just going and that's how i always view all my videos i'll finish it post it and then i'll watch it obviously to make sure i didn't accidentally uh <laughs> export with me making my cringe uh thumbnail faces in the back end <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then a week later i'll come back to it and say what could i improve what could i do better what what what, what more could i have done and i think that's really important to just learn from what you've done post it just get it done it doesn't have to be good good enough and may 27th is uh <laughs> the last like i'm that's how far backlogged i am in my swatches <laughs> oh wow <laughs> you'll get there I can't re- <laughs> yeah i can't say anything because half the time i just don't upload what i have done <laughs> yeah so, there's like hundreds of of uh manis that i just have not uploaded no, but i think <laughs> just just post it just just get it done yeah get it posted get it out there and then you can look back and say this is what i've changed this is what i do because i know you said that you had a video of how to stamp and you're like i don't want to post it post it just do it what's the worst that's gonna happen you know is, is your house gonna explode eaten by bears <laughs> eaten by bears, eaten by bears. <laughs> yeah. that's pretty bad <laughs> no that probably that's, won't lead that's to that, what probably. happens when you didn't choose the man <laughs> yes <laughs> oh no bears don't eat me <laughs> But that's the thing. It's just the most important thing. Because, like, I watched Hillary's uh, latest video where it was a Q&A. And she said, like, someone asked, how do you get started? She said, just start. And that's why I've been yeah. telling people. It's because you, you're not going to be perfect your first time. If you wait until you have the latest and greatest, like, camera and stuff like that and microphone, it's never going to be good. You're, like, you're not, you don't know how to use it yet. Just do what you do. I filmed on my iPhone 8 using its onboard microphone. My videos sound terrible and they look terrible until I figured out how to properly light them. And just until, you know, until I finally progressed and figured out how to make my iPhone understand me. Because, <laughs> it, it, you know, having yourself heard in a little pinhole is hard. <laughs> yeah, if you go on to Fanatic Your Archives, which is just, it's what it sounds like. It's my archive channel. Um, you can see, actually, I think it's, I don't think I have my first uh, stream up there, but I have my second stream. And oh boy, very, very different. Obviously, there's things about me that are the same, but it was just like a few of my friends who were being kind enough to come watch so I could get a three average and like hopefully become an affiliate. And it was just a camera facing down. It wasn't always in focus, you know, and it's like from that to where I am now with like everything that goes on in my stream, even though half of it doesn't work right now because OBS is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it's such a world of difference and so much evolving goes into that. Like you don't even know if your taste when you start is what your taste is going to be when you get where you're going. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. I remember thinking that, like, Twitch overlays were really trashy. (laughs) That having, like, your recent sub, recent whatever. And then, like, and then after after I got into the Twitch world, I was like, no, this is actually, this is actually great. This is sick. I love these. (laughs) I want, I want a very involved one. Thank you. (laughs) I also make my, like, content to, um, today's standard of content is much, much different than yesteryear. We are in the passive form of entertainment. I am on someone's second monitor. I'm on their phone while they're doing something else. So yeah. mm-hmm. how do I alert someone? Because when I watch Kelly Marissa's videos, I love Kelly. I miss her swatches all the time because she's on the second monitor and I'm doing something else. That's why I add my hoops, mm. my my little pops. So it lets the person who's just, mm. I'm on the second monitor, they, get, they just turn their head. They know something has changed in the video. I think it's also important to know where we are in content creating streaming is extremely Mm. popular right now because it's just something on in the background you have to be you are you are someone's mealtime video someone's eating dinner with you on the background you just also keep that in mind your content doesn't have to be high octane it doesn't take much to entertain someone while they're eating they're already eating they're already entertained (laughs) so it's not like your content has to be absolutely perfect it's just you're on the background providing the chit chatty experience you know 
Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's, yeah, good to keep in mind. I genuinely don't think about that. But yeah, we are second monitor content. <laughs> well, it's just, almost everyone is, right? Who's actually, like, yeah. I mean, I, I throw TV shows on in the background. It's in the background. Everything's just background noise now. And just keep that yeah. in mind. Your stuff doesn't have to be perfect because it's on the background. That's how we consume content now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard actually that um, there's been like reports of some TV execs basically saying like, no, the show that you made was like too thinky. Like people, people statistically are more likely to turn something off that they can't follow than they are to stop using their primary screen, which is their phone. And like, yeah, I feel like I'm not as much like that, but I'm definitely the outlier there. But that's just because I like, if I can't, if I can't watch the thing, I'm going to feel like I couldn't watch the thing and then I'm going to freak out about it. So I've got to be able to just like sit and stare at it. <laughs> Which is also a tall order. Well, that's also really important for you though, because I make content I want to see. I make stuff I want to yeah. watch. So make stuff you want to watch. The reason why I show you the photo of the swatch and my live swatch footage at the same exact time, I cannot stand live swatch footage. I hate it. I hate it. It adds nothing to me. I... I, I it's a waste of my time. I, do, I just need the finger wiggles and the photos. That's all I need to know if I need to purchase a polish. But everyone loves swatch footage. They just like to watch it. It's very nice and relaxing. That's why I show you both at the same exact time. Because I want to see both at the same exact time. Because live swatches are wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you make content that's good to you know. want to see i mean i'm not like you know obviously there's a reason why everyone else is doing it one way and i'm doing it a, a, the wrong way so it's probably a lot more successful for your videos to have the like swatch and review voiceover it's probably a lot more successful as a video format <laughs> i'm just messing around on the internet having fun i like your format i'm gonna be honest like i prefer your format <laughs> Thank you. Because, yeah, exactly. I can see. I'm like, oh, that's what it looks like on the first coat. And that's what it looks like when you're done. Okay. And then there's Lindry in the middle. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> Just get all the information at once. I don't mind that at all. In fact, like, that's one of the things I, I used to worry too. Like, oh, I need to show live swatch footage. And then Hillary's really the one that made me go, wait a minute. I love Hillary's video where she just shows one swatch mm -hmm. and the swatch bottle. And that also, like, for me, like, my number one, like, chip to myself is, like, make everything easy. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I've been in over the past several years, like, paring down stuff in my house because, like, if things aren't just the most simple as possible, I'm not going to do them. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I do with my videos, too. I'm like, I don't, I cannot have more than one image. I can't, I just need this. Yeah. <laughs> just this yeah. over here. <laughs> and I like it in videos, too. Yeah, this, this, just make content you want to see. You know what good content looks like because you consume good content. You might not be noticing it, but your subconscious is. So one thing I, I that really stood out to me is um, when I watch Simply Now Logical, I'd be like, her videos are so high quality. They're so good. And one thing I just never noticed, she has background music in every single one of her videos. She uses mm -hmm. it to emphasize things and just adds a quality to her videos that I really admire. And I'm like, I enjoy that. I want to make that. So I started adding background music. I haven't figured it out completely. <laughs> Mine's very, like, I'm still in the process of figuring out and I'll be looking back at all my videos with background music in it and I'll be like, oh, I regret that choice. But I'm learning. Just, just go for it. Just do it. Just get it done. Because if you don't learn it, you're never gonna, you're never gonna succeed. You can't, you can't hit perfection the first time. You can't. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. It's art. Art is practice, you know? Like, whenever someone comes in my chat and they're like, I could never do that kind of nail art. Yes, you could. It is practice. You can do it. I believe in you. You've got it. You just got to put time into it. And that that's the thing that sucks. <laughs> Failure sucks. Mm -hmm. But you never learn. You got to learn. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the process. So do you have any, like, major goals so far as your life as a creator goes? Or are you just kind of seeing what happens next? I just want to have fun. That's all. I don't, Yeah. I keep, people keep calling me like an influencer and all this and that terrifies me. I'm just like, I'm just having fun. I'm having fun. It's a hobby. <laughs> just let me ignore that. La la la. I'm just <laughs> having fun on the internet. That's all I want. And the moment, the moment I stop having fun, I'll probably walk away. Just walk away. I just enjoy it a lot. So that's awesome. I mean, you are an influencer, though. You do influence. Even, you know, like, we are, you're probably a micro-influencer. I'm probably a nano-influencer. No, like. no, you've influenced me. <laughs> I've influenced you. Yeah. But <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> but no, that's the thing, though, is that like even no matter how small your audience is, if you have an audience, you're going to be influencing them. You know, even mm. if you just have friends, yeah. you're influencing them. And yes. yeah, and you, you've talked before about like when we were talking about the news and stuff and the moon cat, I just kind of wanted to go back to that. Because, yeah, I've also had times when it's like I have I feel like I've influenced people the wrong way or like I didn't mm -hmm. give them every single every single like contingency. <laughs> no, that that's one of the things I feel really guilty about right now is I have a review of the Born Pretty stamping polishes. I didn't realize mm. Born Pretty steals swatches and they just recently stole someone's swatches. So I'm no longer using them, I no longer support them, I still have that video up. I think that information's important to have for the stamping things, but like, what do I do with that video? It's just sitting there and I'm just ignoring it and I just feel bad it's there and I'm just like, I don't know how to rectify the situation because I know, <laughs> I know people did purchase that because of me. And now yeah. like, I, uh, it's, it just comes with like a lot of guilt too, because you're like, uh, and I, I feel kind of bad for having me in the center of my swatch and my live swatches too, because it does create a bit of a parasocial instance where you see someone that you might trust talking about this thing while you see it at the same exact time. And that might be influencing people to spend more money because shopping addiction in this hobby seems to handhold very, very nicely. Yes. And I always get very concerned about people who are like, I can't afford my bills. Look at my new Holo Taco haul. And I'm just like, did I do that? I just like, yeah. but I can't be responsible for how people spend their money, but it's just like, I still yeah. feel guilty and I'm just like, uh, how do I handle those? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it wasn't you, it's going to be somebody else. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, and you bought those born pretties because of me, I think. <laughs> what? I think you bought those born pretties because of me, actually. Um, I don't, I bought them because they were cheap on Amazon. I don't know. Maybe. Is this all your fault? Should I blame you? <laughs> it might be all my fault. You can blame me if you want. <laughs> It's fine. You blame me. <laughs> me. I don't know if I don't know if like I do remember you asking about it, them. And it might have like, been you. I I might have been I might have saw it on Amazon and been like, hey, those are cheap. And yeah, I and know I was this like, person. Yeah, they're really quality because <laughs> they are. Uh, but yeah, yeah. There's always going to be like the other day. I I've been I've been hawking glisten and glows uh restore and prep for a long time because the one by kb shimmer the bottle like it's really hard to like pour a good amount into your nail polish bottle and it still is but the problem with glisten and glow that i've just noticed like in the past month or two is that their restore and prep or not restore and prep restore and thin there's dry and prep and restore and thin <laughs> and i've been mixing them up uh this is the one that you this is the nail polish thinner <laughs> um this is the nail polish thinner anyway um this is the nail polish thinner but their like bottle it doesn't really close all the way and i've had two now that haven't really closed all the way and then somebody in the discord was like my res my restore and thin evaporated and maybe i i'm really good about closing things all the way and i'm like uh and I did reply, like, I'm realizing recently that you can't close those all the way. Oh, my God. Mm. So, yeah. KB Shimmer, you're good for something. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I do want to say, Lenry, the fact that you even have those thoughts of, like, how is my influencing going to affect other people puts you above a lot of people who are talking on the internet. So I, I know it's hard sometimes to to feel the responsibility but the fact that you're even aware of it makes you a better influencer <laughs> than a lot of them because you're actually thinking about it and stuff so i know I, i'm sorry i keep making you squirm <laughs> today but i appreciate you and that's why we have you on the podcast because oh, we really you. do look up to you we really Absolutely. do admire your work no it's <laughs> like when i posted my how do you boycott brands responsibly like that are in your collection video like i had a lot of people just be like it's okay it's fine it's a vibe, though, that you're laying on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the laying on the floor, really, uh, that made my heart go out to you. I'm like, oh, no, she's really feeling it. <laughs> it was a great vibe. But it's just how else do you talk about your existential dread? It has to be on yeah. the floor, right? That's where yeah. your deepest thoughts come from. The closest you yeah. are to the earth. Being crushed, <laughs> being crushed by the gravity of it all. <laughs> I can't have floor thoughts without dogs getting all over me, so I... I should maybe kick them out and have some. <laughs> well, some Sunday floor just time. kept coming by, just being like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm great." Thank you, <laughs> what <Sunday."> you doing? <laughs> At least cats don't like lick your face and like. Oh, she was you know. trying. She was trying to lick my ear. <laughs> oh, mm. 
Mm. But like, it, it did Cute. make me feel like less alone though, because so many people were like, "Oh my god, I'm in the same exact situation." Oh my god! And I had like larger yeah. content creators say, "Same, same. How do we do this?" <laughs> It's a weird new world, weird new world to navigate. Yes. Um, I feel like the last question was already kind of answered, but let's, what do you want to do with that? Let's stuff? still do it. And, okay. you know, we'll reiterate. Yeah. We love reiterating. So just to round things out, what is your... What is my... Just to round things out. Yeah. Yeah. Could you answer that, please? Good answer. Yeah, I yes. respect that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to round things out, what are your top tips for people beginning uh, their YouTube journey and especially with nail content in order to grow their following and enjoy the process? Do it. Do it. <laughs> if Do you it. have to stack your phone on books, if you have to, you know, scream at your phone because it can't hear you and you have a pinhole, our cameras, are, our phones are so advanced right now. It will take you so far. It's unbelievable what it is. Photography, by the way, is 99% lighting. You don't need a fancy camera. Just make sure your lighting's right. And you like use your eyes. You can see if your lighting's okay or not. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I would say post at optimal times. Each of these websites, they have a schedule out there. You could just Google it. Best time to post on YouTube and you will find a scale that tells you when the best time is. I feel like personally, mm. like I'm not playing the algorithmic game. Like I said, I'm playing at little league level. So I kind of have the basic rules, <laughs> but like just make sure you're posting at optimal times because I feel like, you know, the algorithm will eventually find you if you're posting mm. good content, but will you burn out before it finds you? Will you mm -hmm. do, will you burn out? And giving it as much of an advantage as you can is just paramount. I will also say when you're making your thumbnails, white text with a black outline can be read on anything. If I cannot <laughs> read your thumbnail, you, it's not a good thumbnail. <laughs> mm. You have to make that thumbnail for a two inch by one inch area. It is very small. Big faces, whatnot. This is what takes you a little bit further. That way people can see you. Clickbait works. Oh my god, clickbait works so well. <laughs> I I remember watching the Simply Neological podcast and Ben was talking about how depressing it was that they were in a room of content creators and they said they spent longer thinking about their thumbnails than they did the video content. And you know, that is like a depressing thought to think about. But it told me the most important thing is your thumbnail. If no one clicks on your video, no one's going to watch it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That's just it. And moving people across platforms is difficult. If when I post on Instagram, it's mostly a notification to let my like YouTube subscribers know. Hardly anyone is going to click on that link in your Instagram stories. Moving people off the platform is difficult. So don't expect yeah. it to happen. If you have 100,000 followers on Instagram, moving them to YouTube is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. CapCut is free free a beautiful price point people beautiful <laughs> it's so easy to learn there's so many guides they're all on youtube too free you can learn this all for free no money whatsoever i didn't start putting money into my youtube channel until i started getting money from my youtube channel mm. dang that's not, just do it just do it <laughs> that, that's that's the just do just go do also don't put cursive in your thumbnails i'm just gonna say it yeah. <laughs> okay here's the yeah. thing i i am the last generation of millennials that learned properly how to read cursive so mm. if you're most people who are on youtube are gen z and alpha and some millennials most of them can't read cursive stop putting cursive in your thumbnails <laughs> they can't what read they have it to read historical documents <laughs> <laughs> then you're fine then you're fine no, it's just, I, I, I'll see like some like I'll see people who are like making common mistakes for the. Th I mean, my thumbnails aren't perfect. My thumbnails aren't perfect. Yeah, but like it's just I see these mistakes and I'm like, well, you could just easily do that with like just don't put cursive. Put put black yeah. background around your letters so I can actually read them. <laughs> All right. 
It's the best time of the show. <laughs> uh, we are going to ask you these 10 questions that originally came from the French series uh, Bouillon de Culture, hosted by Bernard Pivot. But they are better known as questions that James Lipton asked at the end of every Inside the Actor studio that I watched religiously as a child because I was normal. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, get started. What is your favorite word? Love. What is your least favorite word? Can't. What turns you on? Clean, organized space. I like looking at my polish bottles. Well, um, I'm going to blur my background. background. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can see right now what I've got. My exercise machine yeah. right now is doing what it does best, storing clothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what turns you off? Uh, yelling. Yelling. Just angry yelling. Not like excited yelling, obviously. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Fuck. What sound or noise do you love? Uh, <laughs> I like the way it makes my throat feel. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, it's like an elegant Chewbacca. <laughs> A lady Chewy. <laughs> lady Chewy. What sound or noise do you hate? Ooh, 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 this one triggers me. When I hear my computer disconnect something and I haven't unplugged anything. I'm like, mm, what happened? <laughs> what, what's going on? <laughs> Are we okay? What did you do? <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Probably video game design, or maybe I'd go back into phlebotomy. I, I am a trained phlebotomist, so like I enjoyed phlebotomy, but <laughs> and I wouldn't have to learn anything new. Video game designer, I would. <laughs> what profession would you not like to do? Oh, anything that involves driving. Anything that involves driving. I hate driving. I just, oof, traffic. <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome, foolish mortals. And I want the pearl pearly gates to start stretching. And then it's just, I'm at the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. <laughs> yes! Absolutely! <laughs> Correct awesome. answer. I, can, I, can, yes. I can't remember down. Down. the first thing he says. A plus. <laughs> I know we say there's no wrong answers, but there are, and Linder got them all right. <laughs> I just the haunted mansion is go. It's air conditioned. It's a fun visual. Ride. It's so fun. Uh, I I ride it like four times every time at Disney World. <laughs> See, I always like pirates. I mean, I love the Haunted Mansion more than pirates. But me and an ex, who when we worked at Disneyland together, um, we used to go get Subway sandwiches and we would sneak them in and then we would eat them on pirates. Because <laughs> it was a 14 minute long ride. <laughs> pirates is also excellent because it's indoors, you're by water, it's visually stimulating, and you just get to be like, yeah, look at that cool stuff. Yeah. I just yeah. think Haunted Mansion is just a little bit more visually sim stimulating yes. as it's just like, Yes. And then it tilts you backwards. <laughs> yes. Well, I love that part. I'm not a thrill seeker. <laughs> it tilts me backwards. <laughs> it, it just makes your back feel good. <laughs> You're like, ah. I took my my mother and my fiance on that ride, and they both at the same exact time went, oh, as if they <laughs> leaned back because it fixed their backs. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. It was just weird to hear my mother and fiance moan at the same time unsettling <laughs> i didn't like it no that that doesn't sound great <laughs> disney needs to start building more dark rides that's all i'm hearing exactly <laughs> yeah they already have more dark rides than most people so so they're they're doing good and i've heard a lot of stories about things happening on dark rides nothing's ever happened on one that i was operating <laughs> I, well they had they've had to stop at one time we went on because someone decided that they wanted to spread grandma <gasps> sorry the way that you said that was oh, her ashes sorry her ashes special. i said that really weird i said it really weird <laughs> if you if you don't know walt disney world's haunted mansion is the most popular place to drop ashes <laughs> yes, it is. so a it lot is. of people will drop ashes and you if you don't know they'll stop the ride and then they'll vacuum up grandma okay you don't want her they going to the land grandma you don't want her going to the landfill just dump her ashes off Disney proper property. <laughs> good, that's very good advice. <laughs> it has been so amazing having you on here. Um, we may or may not put what we just said into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it has been so amazing having you on here, Linry. Uh, if you're wondering why we're all going, it's because we just had a really funny conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, 
seriously, I'm so glad we finally um, had yes. the energy, had the time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you guys. Oh my God, I was so nervous. I was like, oh, I'm meeting them, I'm talking to them. Oh, I've been watching them for so long. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about you. I'm like, oh my God, she's real. <laughs> <laughs> These are people. I was telling Danny, I was like, we haven't ever like we we've, we've we've chatted in a stream and had chatting at us in streams, but we've never like vocally spoken at the same time to each other. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so different. And like you know, I've done this with my like gamer friends like that, and then meeting them in real life, it's just like it's the same exact thing. You're like, <laughs> what do I do with my hands? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly a human. What's happening? <laughs> But no, it was great. And I'm just I'm just so glad that we could do this today. And you have had such amazing things for our audience to hear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just your message of just do it. It doesn't just have do to be it. perfect. Um, I think so many people need to hear because I think a lot of people yeah. just don't they don't do things they want to do because they think that they'll never be good enough to do it. And unless it's like flying a plane. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're operating a mo motor vehicle of any kind, please get a please license first. Steps. Please be good at that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're so right. Because I've heard that advice over and over and over again. And yet it did take quite a few times hearing it from different people for me to actually try it and start filming videos. So hopefully you saying it one more time on our podcast was what one person needed to hear one more time so that they get started as well. So I appreciate it. No problem. I, I found what also helped me is going back mm -hmm. and watching everyone's first video. Everyone's <laughs> yeah. first face video. <laughs> Even Kelly Marissa, the big giant among us all, was nervous and scared <laughs> in her video. She sounded so yeah. nervous, so scared, and it just gives you so much confidence knowing that everyone starts that way. It is so awkward to film yourself. You will get over it. Quickly, by like video four, I was already just sitting down being like, hello, instead of just sitting there in front of the camera going, <laughs> oh. can I, can, not to put Kelly Marissa on the spot, because obviously she has improved, but I was watching a really old swatch and review of hers because I was buying some old nail polish and she was in a room that clearly somebody else was in who was eating and you could hear the plate scrape and every once in a while you can see her look over like oh my god <laughs> i've done that with my fiance because sometimes this is an office so his desk is right there and like i've had to film videos with him there and like i'll just be sitting there talking blah 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 and then he'll go Hachuh! And I just look at him yeah. like, how dare you? How dare you personally attack me and interrupt my stupid thing? Now I have to re-say that sentence. <laughs> it's so, it threw off my groove. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so many dirty looks I have just in my back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, even even the big wigs out there were once smaller wigs. Yeah. Remember that. <laughs> All right, well, before we end here today, Linry, can you tell our audience where to find you online? I'm just wow Linry everywhere. You heard it here first. Convenient. And, well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I do think that that is enough for today. So, Danny, take us out. Thank you all so much for listening. Please check out our YouTube channel and leave a comment with your favorite moment, a story to share, and of course, any questions you'd like us to answer in future episodes. You can also find all of Linry's links in the description below. Be sure to check out Danny and I on Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. I am Fanatic here. She is Danny Shout. All of our links are in the description. Join us next time when we make a corporate training video on how to boil your phone. Stay lacquered. <laughs>